Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I have cinnamon in my coffee this morning, and it is really good, and it's like my, I think it's at least my second or third cup of coffee this morning. Um, I wanted to start uh, by making a point with what's going on in the worldwide markets. What we're, we, we've, we've, as you know, we've literally watched the entire world's economy shut down, and meanwhile, on many days it seems like the stock market is going up right now i'm looking at cnbc it says jp morgan profit plunges on the current event loan provision all right and meanwhile everybody the, the stock market's up 610 on the dow this doesn't make any sense nothing in these markets makes any sense now I'm not just going to tell you that price discovery is not real in gold, silver, crypto, or the stock market to the downside in its case right now. It will be, the price discovery will be um, there, but it's not there now. The, what you're seeing is not real. The, the last place on the planet Earth that I would put my money is in the U.S. stock market right now. The Dow's at 24000 when it should be at more like 10000 or less, in my opinion. Um, and also at the same time, we're, we're seeing what I showed you yesterday. I'm not just saying that the price discovery is not real on gold and silver. Look, showed you this yesterday. I believe uh, Sam I am had tweeted this out. Comex secures secrecy agreement with CFTC under FOIA not to release details to the public of its market maker program. In other words, they don't have the gold that they're supposed to have. They've been selling all this paper gold, whether I don't know whether it's ETFs or whatever, for all these years, and it's not what has been presented, and it's a nightmare in the making. But I can prove it further. You tell me. Tell me how this works. This, uh, you're, what you're looking at right now is Apmex. This is one of the largest sellers of precious metals in the world. Right now, this is a this is one of the more common silver coins that you can get. This is called a, a one ounce a silver American Eagle. And this, this is what they look like. This is the 2020 version of that. They're doing a pre-sale. The markup, now look up here. The price of silver is 1607. They're selling this one ounce. This is one ounce of silver for sixteen oh seven. They're selling one ounce of silver for twenty four dollars and fifty six cents. Eight dollars. They're 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 acting like this is some great deal. As low as eight dollars and forty nine cent per coin over spot. These items are on a slight delay with an expected ship date of April twenty second, twenty twenty. Your entire order will ship upon their arrival. So in other words, and it's not just that one. If you go back and you look at it, it's all pre-sale. Look at this. Available April 26th. Available, available April 26th. And as you go down, um, a lot of them say alert me. So they don't even have a lot of these available alert me. But there's obviously um, not the supply to meet the demand. Well, meanwhile, look at what has happened with the silver prices. This is the silver chart for this year. So the demand is going crazy. But the, the silver prices are barely doing anything. Um, and so it doesn't add up, folks. Not, let me say it like it is. Nothing that's going on in the financial world adds up. Now, nothing adds up in terms of where prices are. Stock markets should be pummeled beyond belief right now, but it's not. Gold and silver should be going through the roof, but they're not. XRP and Bitcoin should be going through the roof, but they're not. And I'm going to show you some more specifically with XRP. I can prove that you're not getting real price discovery. I've shown it before, but someone brought to my attention that I needed to bring it back up and bring a topic back up that I haven't talked about in a while. And so I will. Now, let's go along and we will first, um, man, I, he sent me a way to pronounce his name and i don't remember where it is, but I'll I'll do my best. Hell sickle Carmona. It sent me this. 
Without a doubt, this is from David Gokstein. Uh, without a doubt, XRP has one of the most passionate uh, has one of the most passionate community in crypto. Extremely smart and knowledgeable, and I believe he's a thousand percent right. But I also believe there's a reason for that. I've always said this. There's a reason that the XRP community is larger, smarter, and 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 trust me, I went to Vegas. I went to the Litecoin Summit, and then I went to Swell. Now, if you put those two things beside each other and you look at them, it, it's a really eye-opening experience um, to <laughs> to look at the people that are a part of both. Very eye-opening. Um, so, yes, there's a reason that it's a smarter, more knowledgeable group of people. It's because XRP is the one and the smart people get it. A lot of people are going to be sick to their ever-loving stomach when this is all said and done. And they're going to be like, how did you guys know it? And they're probably going to say we were just lucky, but we were not. We were just a, a we were at a point in time where a, a group of very smart people started bouncing ideas off of each other. And we, and all the, the light bulbs went off and it formed a, aha, there it is. We can see it very clearly. It's like plugging into the matrix. It takes a while. Trust me, it took me a while. XRP Crypto Wolf, China's government has launched the National Blockchain and Distributed Ledger Technology Standardization Technical Committee, which includes 15 organizations and 71 members. The committee will work on setting up national standards for blockchain and distributed ledger technology. You think so? Michelle Vandenberg sent me this, um, and this is from Julia Chatterley. She has been all over it. She... You, when I watch um, her covering this, you can tell that she's got a pretty healthy skepti skepticism about what's going on herself. Of what we're hearing in earnings season, kicking off, as I mentioned, with reports from some of the big U.S. banks this week. J.P. Morgan Chase says its first quarter profit dropped nearly 70 percent from a year ago, while Fargo also missed profit and revenue expectations. Claire Sebastian has all the details. Claire, I, I said earlier on our, our programming, we've been operating in a snowstorm a snow blizzard since the beginning of March, really, and we've got no idea when the snow melts. The key is protecting against future losses, consumer losses, and we heard that in huge size from these banks. Yeah, Julia, billions and billions of dollars have been set aside by these banks. In the case of J.P. Morgan, they've, they've built up their reserves by $6.8 billion. Uh, this, by the way, is a forward-looking number uh, compared to all the other uh, backward-looking numbers in these earnings reports. That's to cover future credit losses, and most of that is concentrated in the consumer division, uh, especially credit cards. So this really shows that this is the kind of crisis that, that, that we don't have to wait for it to trickle down to regular people, to consumers. It, it, it already is. They are expecting people not to be able to pay back loans and uh, and credit card payments. Same goes for uh, for Wells Fargo. They've set aside, they've built up their reserves by $3.1 billion. And I think the question for the markets, the question for investors, and frankly, everyone who's watching the, the course of the economy over this crisis, is is that going to be enough? Uh, that JP Morgan, interestingly, uh, on the call just now, said that their, their assumptions that are built into that reserve build of $6.8 billion, uh, they are assuming a 25% drop in US GDP and unemployment rising over 10 percent. They are including in that assumption the effect of their forbearance programs uh, for consumers, things like waiving certain fees, extending deadlines for payments and things like that. And they are including government stimulus. But they say since they closed the books on this quarter just two weeks ago, their economists' forecasts have darkened. So I think that shows you that, A, they are probably going to have to build up reserves more in the second quarter, uh, and B, how fast the situation... I don't have to show you any more of that to for you to see the complete and utter nightmare that is unfolding and it's 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 in everything credit cards home mortgages the cascading effects of what this is are totally being underestimated this is a complete and utter disaster and the fact that the, on any day the stock market could be up even one point on the dow blows my mind in this in this situation but at some point, the chickens will come home to roost and, the, and everything will be claimed to see. And the United States and the world, in my opinion, is going to be in a position where they have to do, like Brad Combs and Cryptopolis have been talking about, there's going to have to be some sort of a reset, a debt jubilee, where debts are forgiven. How that unfolds, great question. But this is a disaster. And remember, 
these politicians and these powerful people, they do like Rahm Emanuel said, they never let a crisis go to waste. Do you think that they did not know that the, the debt, do you think they don't know that the debt situation across the world is unsustainable? What better time to fix it and to do something about it that you couldn't do without an emergency than now? Keep your eyes on that. Then Mr. B comes in and he says this, this is like, you can't make this stuff up, folk. American business owners will be unhinged, unhinged when they find out SBA.gov changed the terms of the disaster assistance program. Grant that is no longer 10K, but 1K per employee up to 10K. Can't help but feel they lied to get people to stay at home. Let them hear you. He's talking about this letter that everybody got from the SBA. On March 29th, 2020, following the passage of the CARES Act, the SBA provided small business owners and nonprofits impacted by this with the opportunity to obtain up to 10,000 advance on their economic injury disaster loan. That's not how this was worded. It was first come, first serve. You, you're going to get it if you apply for it, um, it and it's up to some um, billions or whatever. But now, to ensure that the greatest number of applicants can receive assistance during this challenging time, the amount of your advance will determine be determined by the number of your pre-disaster as of January 31st, 2020 employees. The advance will provide 1,000 per employee up to a maximum of $10,000. So they're not gonna give what they said they were gonna give. So now <clears throat> you might've thought you were getting, I wonder how many people planned on getting $10,000 and now they're gonna get 1,000 if they're lucky. That is a, another part of the disaster. This can't be measured, folks. It can't be measured. Now, I showed you this yesterday from Stephen from Bull Diet. Western Union is testing and considering the use of XRP. We showed you this. It's in print. This is from Credit Suisse. Now, one thing that many of you have probably never seen is this. This is from back, I believe it was around 2018. But listen, this is the Western Union CEO. You've dabbled with blockchains in, in your past uh, and cryptocurrencies as well. How did that work out for you? I think, you know, we are still working... Uh investing there. We have our own group, invest only on the uh, blockchain and on the cryptocurrency. Um, we did also a test with Ripple, and we are still doing it. And it's still ongoing. Still ongoing. You know, we are looking at it, and we are really learning from Ripple. Uh, you but said it, a year or so ago, when you were using Ripple's product, that uh, it was, quote, still too expensive. You didn't see... Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we are in a different... They just announced with MoneyGram, as you know, yesterday or the day before, an announcement that they're investing there. And They, uh, they took an activist size investor's stake in MoneyGram. Yes. Uh, 10%. And um, obviously, we are in a different position than MoneyGram. We are, you know, we have our own settlement system, which is extremely cost efficient. Um, today, it showed us, you know, as we do in the test, it's five times more expensive doing with a cryptocurrency, with a stable currency like Ripple, but, you know, it's others. For us, it's different. Uh, but I just saw Brad before uh, coming to this meeting. I said, hey, Brad, you know, we are still in talking. I congratulate him to this deal. Obviously, MoneyGram needed something, and Ripple needed something. That sounds a good deal. But for us, it's currently we are pretty much um, okay with our uh, settlement system. We can move money uh, in a way that nobody can move it. So that's, that works. But look, hey, I'm open. Any cost savings, any innovation, I'm there. I have, you know, we can sign a deal tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't do this often, but I'm going to do it today. While I was, um, let me make sure I can credit who sent it to me. Um, from, this is from uh, Twitter. While I was playing you that video, I got a message on Twitter from, for, with an article. It's from, at, it's from e -C -O -S -S -E -X -R -P one and here's the article. You can't make this stuff up, folks. You can't make it up. Listen up. Listen very, very closely. Santander bank chairman and art collector Anna Patricia Bowden appointed to International Monetary Fund Advisory Board. The group has been formed to tackle major financial issues, including the current events and its global economic impact. Now, who's Anna Bowden, folks? That's Banco Santander. She runs Banco Santander. And who is she? Remember when I showed you the uh, the Economic Club of New York where she was speaking on stage and she kept caught, she kept talking about Brad Garlinghouse and how they're working with Ripple. They've got that they've got their 
app. Um, I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank on what their app was called. But they, they've got the app that uses Ripple technology. She's the same one that was on stage at that economic uh, club of New York, um, economy club of New York. And she was sitting there saying that, do you realize that I think two billion was the, the two billion people were going to be on smartphones and, and have there's going to be smartphones in the hands of two billion people within the next year. This was her in 2019. Folks, my son might have to draw you a picture today of Anna Boten and Banco Santander. She's on the advisory board at the IMF in the middle of this crisis. She's appointed there, folks. All right. Okay, and then there was this from yesterday. This one jumped out at me. Um, this is from Digital Assets Daily. Watch this. A proposal by <laughs> Senator Hawley to get direct payments to uh, employers to pay um, people who have been laid off and to keep people on payroll. Um, does the administration support that proposal? Well, again, that, that is the PPP. The PPP is basically sending money to small business, 50% of American workers to keep those people paid. And it's the most efficient way. Every dollar, as I said, we do through that, it's one less dollar of unemployment. And more importantly, we want those people to have be associated with the business so as soon as the president is ready to open up the economy, those businesses are together. We don't want those businesses to fall apart. That's why this is such a successful program. But are you talking about unemployment? You're talking about the unemployment. I'm hoping, I'm sending it indirectly to the states. We would have preferred that it was sent directly to the people. The Democrats wanted it to be sent through the unemployment system. And, you know, I've talked to you about it. We have 40-year-old equipment in many of those systems that run by the state. But I'm hearing they're getting the money out anyway. So some, some of them are, and some of the states aren't. And we encourage, you know, we're working with the states to try to update their computers. But it's a, it's a long haul. Okay. Thank, well, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Phase four, Steve. Phase four. I love that. I was actually I, I was actually in my bedroom yesterday afternoon when I heard him say that. He goes, phase four, Steve, phase four. I started laughing. I was like, wow, that's a double take moment. Okay, XRP Bart sent me this. Uh, we've already covered this. JP, Mark, uh, JP Morgan profit plunges. Um, now, I want to get into, this is the person that gave me the idea for covering this. And I'm, I'm going to cover it really fast just because I don't want to make this video too long. But Gimme Crypto reminded me, I haven't talked about SBI in a while, and made me aware of this. Um, uh, first, let me go through real quick. Uh, so SBI buys into, buys like 10.5% of Ripple in 2016. Here's the one of the articles, Ripple Strikes, multinational deal with SBI holdings to meet growing demand for Ripple. And then they formed the J J Japan Bank Consortium, but consortium. Um, and that was the collection of 61 banks, which was 80% of the banks in Japan. And the whole goal was to get these banks to use the Money Tap app, Ripple technology. They've been working on this for two years. Well, um, Gimme uh, Crypto had made this guy. I, I didn't even know who this guy was. Well, this guy is the CTO and the director of SBI Ripple Asia. And so this person was telling me, basically, check this guy out. He's pretty active on social media. Look at what he says. And he's so anyway, first of all, um, he retweets a thinking crypto thing about the Western Union and the XRP. This kind of it's interesting to look at some of these people's feeds because it kind of shows you what they're thinking. Um, he, he also um, tweeted this. Uh, the boom is just around the corner in XRP. We, we trust. Do your own research. Uh, and then this XRP joker has warned you all from the very start, the biggest transfer of power this world has ever seen has just taken place. The Fed, along with the USA, will control the world. Don't be blinded. Wake up. This storm isn't over yet. Buy XRP. T turn off the news. Um, and then there all of the, but anyway, he's talk, he's doing these major bullish things. He's, he's, he's liking and tweeting different things like this. This one was my favorite that he retweeted. You can see right there. XRP will become a neutral, non-sovereign financial reference point. So you got the CTO of SBI Ripple Asia who's retweeting these types of things. We're not crazy, folks. These The people that are actually running the show, and I've told you this before, Ripple has been very upfront. Ripple's never lied to you. They've told you every step of the way. They've even said to you that our simple goal is to make XRP the world reserve digital asset. So anybody who says you're crazy for thinking something like that or saying something like that, that's to say that Ripple is crazy too. 
because they've said it from day one. We're not crazy. It's not our imagination. We've seen enough. All right. So I just wanted to take you through this. Here's SBI Ripple Asia. Um, and then I wanted to make a point. Don't forget SBI Virtual Currency. We hear nothing out of them. We hear nothing right now out of SBI uh, Asia. Um, here's SBI VC trade. This is their company profile. I saw one thing that jumped out at me. It's pretty funny. Um, the This is their officers, director Satoshi Kusakabi corporate, whatever that means. Now, I want to finalize this by making the point. I told you at the beginning of this video, you are not getting real price discovery. I can prove it. You do what you see in the XRP price does not reflect SBI virtual currency. It doesn't reflect it on coin market cap. You can go through the list of exchanges where they get their data. They will tell you that SBI virtual currency does not give you a feed. So we're not hearing anything out of SBI and you're not seeing the prices reflected that come out of SBI. That you can't get it. Fiat leak actually told Mr. B that they don't get a feed from SBI. And if you look here in the exchange section and go down the list, there is no SBI virtual currencies. You won't see SBI virtual currencies on Live Coin Watch. You can go through their feed as well. You won't get it on Coin Paprika either. Go to uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter the exchange that you go to. You're not going to see SBI virtual currencies. The price you see for XRP is a distraction, just like Glenn Hutchins said. It's a distraction until it's not, folks. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your, tell your friends and family that you do not yet, yet, get real price discovery in XRP. But you will. Thank you for listening.